Well, I think lots of people are aware that Jews and also Muslims are not supposed to eat um, pork. But many people are maybe not aware that Jews and also Muslims are not supposed to eat uh, blood. And I'd like to talk today about why Jews and actually Christians technically as well, according to Acts 15, are not supposed to eat blood pudding. It is Leviticus 17 uh, verse 11. Um, and this whole passage of Leviticus 17 tells you why you're not supposed to eat blood and actually says why you should die if you eat blood. Um, so here uh, in Leviticus 17, 11, read it for you in the English, not in the Hebrew. Um, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. So we are given two reasons why we are not supposed to eat, or why Jews are not supposed to eat blood. Reason number one is because there's life in the blood. There's nefesh, um, life force there. So the reason you're not supposed to eat it is in, in some sense you don't, shouldn't take the life force of another being into yourself. And the second reason is that um, it's given f by God for atonement. It's, you know, when you do something wrong, it is there um, to atone, to um, for the, the sin or the transgression you have committed. And both are then combined in the last part of the verse saying that, you know, be, there's atonement power in the blood because there's nefesh, there's life force in the blood. Maybe you can imagine that if you go to the temple and you had done something wrong, something that offended God unintentionally, you would have to buy an animal or bring an animal that you had, a goat, an ox, a sheep, a lamb. You would bring it to the temple, you would hand it over to the priest, and the priest would then kill the animal and had to drain all of the blood of the animal um, at the base of the uh, altar. So if you picture this for a moment, um, maybe a few dozen people a day or maybe hundreds of people even uh, on, a, on a given day would bring animals to the temple and they would all slaughter them there. Maybe you can imagine a priest being fairly um, bloody, you know, bloody hands, um, bloody garments, and I imagine that a temple, that the temple actually would have smelled like a slaughterhouse, would have like thousands of flies flying around and um, it would actually look very gory and, you know, compared to what we're used to in the church or synagogue today. Now the Christian church has used this symbol as well. When Jesus dies on the cross, his blood atones for the sins, for the transgressions of mankind. But it also has that, and often Christians forget this, has uh, used this symbol of the blood in um, communion or in the Eucharist. Um, and it says in the New Testament that Jesus in the last night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, he broke it and he gave it. And he also took um, a cup of wine and said, this is my blood, drink it. This is the blood of New Covenant. Now if you're a Jew, that would have been an outrageous thing to say. And in John 6, you actually have a scene where Jesus says, if you do not drink my blood, you don't have life in you. And this, so he applies this Leviticus passage and says, unless you have... Um, partake of this blood, symbolically speaking, you don't have divine life in you. So it actually turns this passage in Leviticus around and uses it that way. It would have been a shock. Uh, and in uh, John 6, where this passage is, it's, it's very clear that the people listening to him think that he's crazy. I mean, um, it's a blasphemous thing to, I mean, on the one side, it would either be talking about cannibalism or it would just be completely blasphemous to say that you need to eat the blood uh, blood and flesh of this person. So um, it would have been an outrageous thing to say. And uh, I think Jesus, or at least the way it's portrayed in John, that's the point of this. Jesus wants to make a point that you have to drink, you must drink the blood in order to have life in you, which is a complete turnaround of Leviticus 17, where you shouldn't drink blood because it has life in it. Jews, of course, stick to it. Um, you know, that's why you have um, an animal has to, to this day, has to be slaughtered a, a certain kind of way, the kosher way. Um, a certain type of special butcher has to um, kill the animal a certain way, so, so that the, all the blood is drained out. And if you're really orthodox, you will even afterwards salt the meat so that it drains all the blood out. Um, and in the Muslim tradition, that's very similar. Though I know the Quran has several passages where it says you should not eat or drink blood. But I'm not sure what the reason behind this is, and so I cannot speak uh, on what a Muslim ruling for this would be.